the largest demonstration in Israel's history. Protest organizers say 500,000 Israelis rallied in Tel Aviv, calling for a deal to bring back the remaining Israeli captives. And across the country, 250,000 others joined similar demonstrations. Mr. Prime Minister, a few days ago you stood in front of the families of the captives and said sorry that we're not able to bring them back alive. But what kind of forgiveness is that? If you do not intend to change your ways, we will not forgive. The record number of demonstrators comes a week after the Israeli army announced it had recovered the bodies of six captives from a tunnel in southern Gaza last week. Family members of Israeli captives and the groups representing them blame Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his government for failing to secure a deal. That's an, a shame that the good government represents us. It's a far away from what the people of Israel are thinking, the majority. Demonstrators say they'll continue to protest until the government hears their demands and changes its policy. The consecutive demonstrations over the last week saw unprecedented crowds, but Netanyahu maintains that military pressure is still the main way to bring the remaining captives back home, and a deal to bring about their release is still nowhere in sight. Hamza Salhout Al Jazeera, Amman. Libby King Lenkinski is vice president of public engagement at the New Israel Fund. It works to support democracy and social justice in Israel. She's joining us live from New York. Thanks very much indeed for being with us. Israeli politicians um, often remind us that Israel is a democracy. Is there still evidence that the government of Benjamin Netanyahu is accountable to the Israeli people? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, you know, I think that I think that for many, many years, there's been this idiom about Prime Minister Netanyahu that he's Teflon, that things just slide right off of him. And I think um, the fear is that even now, when you see, uh, as you reported, three quarters of a million of Israelis in one day after consecutive protests all week long, um, it, there isn't really any evidence that this will change Netanyahu's behavior. What it can change is his stronghold on Israeli society. But because of the way Israeli electoral and parliamentary systems work, that won't have an immediate effect. So there have been polls this week. The last poll that I saw was from two days ago, showing that Netanyahu's favorability is down, um, and that if there were to be an election today, Netanyahu's party, the Likud, would only be at 22 seats, whereas Benny Gantz's party, National Unity Party, would be at 23. So in some sense, perhaps this is having an effect, but because we're not in elections right now, and it would require a collapse of the existing coalition in order to bring us into elections, this the 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 hostage deal, a ceasefire deal, does depend on the current leadership, and it is hard to imagine them taking their cues from these protests. But that doesn't mean that there isn't an impact on the protests on the short, short medium, and long term future of Israeli society. Uh, it's just unclear whether they can have any influence on what Netanyahu himself will do. Benjamin Netanyahu has been facing opposition from Defence Minister Yoav Gallant, from senior military leaders, from his own intelligence community with regard to a deal, and of course, as we've seen, from 750,000 Israelis, plus of course from the US as well. Is there any indication that he's beginning to run out of options and it might be become increasingly difficult for him to find a way of continuing the war? I very much hope so. And I think that many, many, many Israelis need to see this coming to an end. You know, I've been to some of these protests, not in the last week, but over the course of the last 11 months. And what you see and feel on the streets of these protests is total desperation and rage. And I think it's a misconception to think that the, the Israelis that are out there protesting are thinking about the different mandates of political parties. Many of them are on their knees begging 
for anything that can be done to bring their loved ones home. And I think that the outpouring that we've seen this week is because of the almost because of the particular devastation that the recovery of the six bodies um, this past weekend felt like to Israelis. Um, first of all, the sort of um, heightened profile of some of the particular hostages that were killed and found, but also just the understanding that they really could have been saved and that while Netanyahu has been avoiding this deal, these people were still alive. And then they weren't alive when they came home because we missed the opportunity for that deal to bring them home alive. And I think that has just been a straw that broke the camel's back for many, many Israelis who were still holding out some kind of hope that they would come home alive. Mm. As you've just been describing, the focus of the protests, of course, is to try to get the captives returned uh, from Gaza. But of course, any deal that's signed would ultimately lead to a ceasefire and the cessation of fighting uh, in Gaza. How much of that element of it actually resonates with the people who are protesting, because of course that will have longer term implications, particularly for the security of Israel. I mean, there have been groups at the protests calling for ceasefire as early as November, December. Um, and I think that number has been um, growing in a pretty steady way. I think that number has grown pretty dramatically in this last week, where an, uh, an increasing number of Israelis who are protesting understand that ceasefire is actually the only way that the hostages will come home. I think that's now a pretty common understanding among protesters. Uh, and you do see rising numbers of Israelis wanting this to end overall, whether they're in the streets or not. Um, whether, whether that will have an impact on Netanyahu's decisions, I mean, it's hard to imagine, given what you mentioned, that even the voices of his top security cabinet haven't swayed him on this. And meanwhile, the general trust in government is completely broken on the streets of Israel. A person very close to me who is not a human rights advocate, not a protester like I am, um, recently told me that he's been going to protests every day because it re he realized, and this was very stark for me, he said, those families could have been me. I've done all the things. I served in the military. I have a high paying job and I pay taxes. I send my kids to public school in this country. And those are the same stories that you hear from families of hostages and bereaved families. The government has completely abandoned them. And so it is also abandoning me. And I don't even know what I can believe in anymore because of that. So there's a real big crisis on that level. Whether that will extend to compassion for the, the 40,000 dead Palestinians, that's an open question. But you have to understand also that Israeli society in general is in limbo for almost a year now, as they have felt completely abandoned by their own government, by our own government. And so I think that's the primary thing on people's minds. Debbie Lenkinski is Vice President of Public Engagement at the New Israel Fund. Ma'am, we appreciate you being with us on Al Jazeera. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.